after a bit of a break to get my wisdom teeth taken out. My mouth is pretty well healed now and I'm back to making some more Guards of Atlantis painting videos. This video is about painting Dodger the Warlock, a pretty awesome sculpt with an easy artwork color scheme, and some opportunities to try out some fun glowy fiery spell effects. The mold lines aren't too bad on Dodger, there's just one large one running around the edge of the cape, including the sides and top of the cape, and the rest isn't too terrible, but the one on the feet and the base next to them is pretty noticeable. The artwork has a really cool black and crimson armor color scheme, with white hair making a pretty strong contrast. The white hair isn't quite as distinct on the miniature, but the fire effect in the hands will do the heavy lifting in its place. I start with my usual pre-shading process, priming the mini gray and dry brushing it heavily with a pure white paint. I accidentally had too much water on my brush the first time around, which kind of messed up the first attempt, but I just wiped some of it off as best I could and kept going, drying my brush off thoroughly with a paper towel and grabbing some more white paint to try again. Here you can see that around the fire effects on her hands I really jammed the brush in there, trying to make it pretty much all white and giving some extra attention to the part of the cape and the arm around the fire effect. Now I move into blocking in some of the colors, and I start with the silver used on the armor trim and the whip. I'm really quick on this step, and I don't bother getting every nook and cranny, since I fill all that in with a pretty deep black color later. I'm not worrying at all about spilling a bit of this silver paint over to where it doesn't belong, or being sloppy with it, or not covering all of these surfaces perfectly. Then I move on to the red armor cloth parts, mixing a little bit of a black speed paint into a red one, and then painting this pretty heavily over all of these areas. Some of the red leg armor is a little tricky to reach without getting paint on the other surfaces around it, so just do the best you can and wipe off any speed paint you get on other surfaces while it's still wet. If you don't though, don't worry too much about it because that area is so hidden that it shouldn't really be noticeable anyway. Also the black speed paint in the next step should cover it up fairly well. For the black armor I just use pure grim black, and I apply this over all of the silver metal colors as well. For this step, just make sure you paint over the metal whip by her hip, as well as the strange sort of jawline armor or cloth piece, whatever it is, around her chin. If you look at the card art here, she has a sort of chin strap type thing, and it would look a bit too out of place if we tried to make that skin colored and blended it into the jaw. Moving on to the cloak, I'll be roughly wet blending two different speed paint colors together. The lighter color is a mix of cloudburst blue with some holy white, and the darker one is Cloudburst Blue with some black mixed in. For this, I don't want it to be totally the same color as the armor, but I also kind of want it to fit in and not stand out too terribly much, so I like the way that this cool, desaturated blue color fits in. Incorporating a little bit of this cool blue color should also help to make an interesting dichotomy between cool and warm colors on each half of the model. If I were doing it again, I might not use the Cloudburst Blue in the black shadows, I don't think there was quite enough contrast here between my light and dark colors, but as always, you don't need to stick to my recipe, and you can pick whatever colors you think will work. And when I was painting all the black surfaces, I forgot to paint the horns, so I just go back and do this now. And I also forgot to paint the bottom of the cape along the ground, so I go back and do that as well. I paint the skull with Speed Paint Pallid Bone, and the skull is kind of tricky to make out around all of the billowing smoke, but thanks to a helpful commenter on a previous video, I found out that this is actually a skull with curved horns coming out of the sides of it, with a smoke or flame effect spewing out from the top and bottom of the skull. For the moment, just as a placeholder step that's good enough for now, I thin down a light pink contrast paint with some medium and paint that all over the flame effect. I'm not worrying too much about this, because I'm going to be spending a lot of time on the flame effects in later steps, but this is a good quick and dirty method if you just want to put paint on the model and then be done with it. I paint the hair with a white, or technically light gray, contrast paint, and then I paint the base with my regular khaki color. There's so much black and gray on this model that I don't really want the base to be even more gray with a gray stone look. I prefer painting skin with regular acrylics as opposed to contrast paints, so I thinned down this brown rose color and apply it in a couple thin coats. And then I decided that that's a little too dark of a starting color for my skin tone, so I mix in a little bit of my highlight flesh color to this base coat and do it again. 
At this point, I also decided that the neck area between the two curls of hair should also be skin colored, so I just went back and did that as well. Now this is a pretty decent stopping point for a very quick and dirty table ready paint job. If you want to stop here, obviously you can do whatever you like, but I recommend at least throwing a brown wash on the base and painting the base rim black. It also wouldn't hurt to take a light pink color and just really quickly dry brush it around the flame effects, just to kind of sell the effect of it emitting light and being a bright flame sort of thing. If you want to continue on with me though, next I'll be doing some quick effects to focus on the glowing spells and smoke, and then just some quick highlights to most of the other surfaces, and I think that these steps will really help to elevate the look of the mini. Now I'm following the art to keep these flame effects a fairly bright magenta color, but I think also if you wanted to do a different color, something like a bright lime green might look really cool, since it would contrast nicely with the red colors on the mini. To reintroduce some brightness to the core of the flame effect, I thin down some pure white paint and apply it to the recesses of the effect. I do this a couple of times over, each time just adding a bit more thin white paint into the recesses, into the sort of core area of the flame, until it gets to a really nice bright white color. Then I do the same thing with the skull, focusing more around where the head of the skull is and less around the tail with the horns, because I want the fire effect to look like it's originating from the skull and billowing out from there. And just like with the fire on the other hand, I do this in a couple coats, and I think I even reintroduce a little bit too much white again, but that's fine because we can just shade it down later. Then first I tried taking the bright magenta contrast paint that I was using before, and I thin it down quite substantially with medium and glaze it over the flame and smoke effect, pulling it towards the tail of the flame and trying not to let it pool in the parts where I dotted it with white paint. First I used the contrast paint from before for this step, but I thought it was making all the crevices of the flame effect a little bit too dark in color, so I switched to mixing in some white into a magenta paint, thinned that down with a lot of water, and applied that over it instead. You might have more success using something like the familiar pink speed paint, or even a pink fluorescent paint if you want the effect to look really bright. I do this a second time, but this time I just use the pure magenta paint thinned down with water. Due to some exceptional camera work, most of the footage for this was blurry, but you can probably get the idea. Once that's done, I mix a little bit of gray paint into this magenta color, still with a lot of water or glaze medium added to make this a fairly transparent layer, and do the same thing a couple of times, only applying paint to the tail half or quarter or so of the flame, and always pulling it towards the tail edge. For the more smoky effect on the right hand, I do this even more since I want it to look more like a billowing smoke, and less like a bright glowing flame color. After that I take a dark gray paint, and using a small dry brush, I dry brush the tail of the flame effect. For the smoky effect on the right hand, I dry brush the entire effect with this dark gray. You don't have to use a dry brush here, and if you're more comfortable with a regular paintbrush, just paint this dark gray onto the very tips and edges of the lines of the flames. If at any point during these steps you messed up the bright white or light pink parts of the flame, that's totally fine. I thought that I darkened the value of the color down a little too much on mine, so here you can see me just brightening it back up again. Just take your white or very light pink color, keeping it thinned down with a bit of water, and brush it back into the recesses or the lower half of the flame effect wherever you want it. The thinned paint will naturally run into the recesses a little bit to give it that nice internal glow look that I'm after. And now I'm actually going to pause and do some quick highlights on some of the other surfaces before I go back and paint some quick object source lighting around these flame effects. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to take advantage of these highlights on the other surfaces that I'm doing, essentially just tinting the highlights that I make on certain surfaces around the flame effects to be a little bit more of a pink color. I start my highlights first by highlighting the red armor, mixing in a little bit of a skin tone into the red paint. Then it's on to a medium desaturated bluish gray color for the armor highlights, and I keep this more of a grayish color than a bluish color so that it doesn't look too similar to the color of the cape. After that I pick out all of the silver edges and trim with a bright silver color, taking one that's a little bit brighter than my original base coat color. I don't want to spend time layering highlights over the whole huge cape area, so I opt for dry brushing it instead. 
I mix up a fairly desaturated blue color, and then I dry brush it all over the cloak. Luckily, most of the cloak is very isolated from the rest of the mini, so we don't have to worry about the dry brushing spilling onto other surfaces. That being said, just be a little careful when you're dry brushing it around the head and shoulders. I'm pretty heavy handed with this dry brushing, and I do it a couple of times, mixing in more of the bright bluish color each time, but if you want your cloak to look more like a black color, I'd opt for just one gentle dry brush of a light blue or gray, and call it good. I highlight the horns a couple times by mixing pure white into my German gray color, and just pick out mostly the striations on the horns, trying not to highlight too much of the surface area to make sure that the horns still read as a very dark black, but more of a shiny dark black color. I shade the skin pretty heavily by thinning down a mix of a dark plum color with my original skin color, and I do this because I want a rich purple shadow tone in the skin. You could also instead use any purple or dark magenta, or just equal parts of like Drucci Eye Violet and Reichland Flesh Shade, or anything along those lines. Doesn't really matter what you use. Then I go back after that's dry and highlight the skin with some thin layers, working first with pure brown rose, and then mixing in a little bit more of the light flesh tone every time, eventually also mixing in a little bit of white into this for the final highlights. The whole time, I keep the paint thinned down with a bit of water and make sure that none of the layers look too thick or obvious, and wait for each layer to be fully dry before starting on the next one. The skin is generally where I always spend the most time and effort making smoother blends, because I think to the human eye it's pretty obvious when skin doesn't look like a nice smooth surface, but that's just me, you can spend however much time you want to on it. Then I highlight the hair with a mix of gray and white, and then close to a pure white for a second pass of highlights on the hair. That's all of the highlights out of the way, and now it's on to the easy brush-only object source lighting effect. I start by thinning down my magenta paint with a lot of water and pushing that around on the arms and nearby horn, but I decided that that wasn't really doing what I wanted. So instead, I thinned down some of the Vulpus Pink Contrast paint from before, and I dragged that over the surfaces around the flame effects, which I think worked a lot better. I tap my brush on a paper towel first to remove most of the paint, and when I apply it, I make sure it doesn't go on too heavy and doesn't flood any of the areas with paint. I paint it onto the upper sides of the arms and the cape or horns that are nearby the flames, and I also paint some of this pink onto the large cape surface. I'm sort of fudging it a bit here, I think, since I don't think the glow would really reach this far onto the cape with how bright I've painted it, but I think that showing some of this glow on the top of the cape here will really help to frame the fire effect. I take some light pink and paint it on some of the raised edges that are pretty close to the flame effects, and while I'm at it, I also use this to brighten up the flames a little bit more. And I think it looks pretty alright at this point. The flame effect in general is still a little bit dark, and it would have been honestly a lot easier to just use an airbrush and quickly kind of cheat by spraying a pink glow around the flames. But I think that this still produced a really cool, sort of darker color result that doesn't totally overpower the rest of the mini. On the home stretch now, I just detour for some really quick cleanup work. I noticed that my red highlight was a little bit sloppy on the leg, so I took some of my red speed paint and cleaned up the recessed area. Then onto the base, I washed it with a dark brown color, and then I dry brushed the base several times, working up to a nice light tan. After that though I thought the base was a bit too light, so I darkened it by thinning down some brown paint with water, and putting that around most of the center of the base, leaving the border that nice bright tan color. Then I paint the base rim black, using two coats to make sure it's fully opaque, and that's a painted Vorlock. If the past couple sculpts were a bit lackluster, I think that this one was anything but. It's still the fairly flat pose that probably worked much better for casting the mini in large pieces, but I love the dynamic pose of her leaping back with the cape billowing out to the side. And the cape frames the spell effect in her hand just really nicely as well. And I think the cape swirling onto the base is also a really great, clever detail, since it makes the mini nice and anchored onto the base, whereas otherwise it wouldn't be very stable and would probably break off or get bent at some point while you're playing with it. I hope that this painting process also kind of showed you that a lot of the time when I'm painting things, I don't get the color right the first time. Maybe it's just too bright or too dark or too much of a red shade or not enough of a red shade. 
but whatever it ends up being, I hope that the takeaway that you get from this is that it's totally okay to make mistakes or pick colors that don't actually look the way that you thought they would look that you have to fix later. So much of the painting process, for me at least, is just kind of reevaluating things as I go and being okay with the color not quite looking exactly what I thought it would look like in my head. Anyway, that's enough soapboxing for me. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.